I can never forget the day my mum took me on the Grand National and I was only seven and in them days there was no seat belts so um, as you did go down the dips and you came off your seat you literally were almost standing up in these rides and it was that adrenaline rush I can just I can still remember it if it was yesterday you know going down the drops and coming out of my seat and the more frightening it was the more I enjoyed it. Purely, I prefer the wood against the steel, purely because, what I just said, every ride is different. <coughs> there is not one roller coaster on this planet, past or present, that I have never gone up to and thought, ooh, no, I'm not going on that. Right, here we are at uh, Oakwood, and we're about to ride speed. Fascin fascinating thing about this ride is you have a vertical lift hill, and you actually go up it laying on your back. And it's 115 feet high. Here we go as we go onto our backs. Oh, oh, oh wow. What makes this ride unique is when you go over the top, you actually go beyond vertical. And here we go. Steel rides can be oh, so rough. They call me rough rider in the club because I like the rough wooden coasters, but you put me in a rough steely, totally different type of roughness. The woodies are king of the park and they are literally just give you that shake, rattle and roll. This photograph here with me and this gentleman here, this fella here is called Charlie Din, to uh, anyone other than a roller coaster enthusiast, they won't have a clue who that is. He is basically the David Beckham of the roller coaster building world, but he's retired now. Um, his daughter, Denise Din Larrick, owns Custom Coasters International. They're the ones that built Megaphobia. So when I was there, he actually cut a piece of wood off in his factory, which he hadn't done for 20, 30 years, because he's retired got a slice of wood off for me and he signed it and that was in 1999, Ryan Charlie Din. I've been offered a lot of money for that off coast enthusiasts and I just wouldn't sell that for the world. And they also gave me that. And then his daughter then gave me a piece of shivering timbers signed by Denise Din Larrick. CCI company, they're the same people who built Megaphobia, also built this beauty here, shivering timbers. Talking about airtime, if you count all the little blips of airtime on air, on most coasters, you get about four to five seconds. Airtime is the amount of time you spend off your seat. And if you add up all the little blips on Megaphobia, you get about four to five seconds. My number one coaster in the world, which is the Voyage in Indiana, in a place called Holiday World. It's not necessarily the tallest, it's not the fastest, it just ticks all the boxes. It's got 90 degree bends, five tunnels, triple downs instead of double downs. It's just out of control coaster, it's superb. And you add up all the blips of airtime on that ride and that'll give you 25 seconds of airtime, which is not known anywhere else in the world. Huge amount of time you'll spend off your seat. And that is why I love that coaster so much and I've been out of that park now three times just to ride that. I had the tattoo on my leg done. And um, I actually had the logo of the Voyage roller coaster put on this. So when we go back out there now, hopefully next year, I'll be able to show the owner because they'll be really pleased to death with that and think, well done. 
Well, yeah, megaphobia means an awful lot to me. Absolute awful lot. I mean, I've ridden it now 5,350 times. I was there for the construction. I knew the owners of the park, which was a massive, massive help. Because they let me just come and go as I please. They give me hard heart. I had permission to go on the site. I was in and out the structure. I've been taking photographs on it, under it. I've walked the track. It, it's literally started very, very early in my roller coaster career. So, yeah, megaphobia does mean an awful lot to me. Um, people say, do you get fed up with it? Do you get bored with it? No. Every ride is different. Wood is totally different to steel. You get on a steel coaster, you're going to get the same ride all the time. Whether you're in the front, middle or back, nothing changes. Crave for the airtime. Airtime is important. You know, you can have good rides where you just don't come off your seat. Mm, too smooth, too slow. You've got to have that adrenaline, the buzz of coming up. People say to me, why do you put your hands up in the air? Right? It's not to be, oh, look at me, I'm brave. It's not. Because you don't hold on. Because if you hold on, you're restricting yourself. You're holding on there. You don't want to hold on. Because if, you don't hold, if you're not holding on, you've got, you've got the freedom then to come off the seat and rise. And that's what you want. That's the reason why an enthusiast about the handle. There was one day, because I'd ridden Megaphobia so many times, and I'm not making this up, Paddy, I walked into the park, and he called me over the office. He said, well, let me guess where you're going. I said, yeah, down to ride Megaphobia. Brilliant. He said, I was hoping you'd come in. This is absolutely genuine, right? He's got his engineers. He says, do me a favour. He said, go down and just um, ride the ride as you know me do, and come back to me. I said, all right. He said, I think there's something wrong. I said, all right, let me have a look. Anyway, I came back. I said, uh, hmm, there was this fault on the bottom of the first drop. And I said, there's also something happening on this other side of the ride. I thought so, he said. I thought so, he said. Because he said, nobody's written it more than you. He said, and you know more about that ride than the engineers. And he used to have me on a regular basis go on there and ride it and report to him if he thought that I thought there was something wrong. Because if anything was different on it, I would know. And I felt quite privileged about that, thinking, well, you know, this is me telling him, yeah, I think this should be done, that should be done. Anyway, he tried it on with me one day, Paddy, and he says to me, go and ride it today, and just come back to me. So I did, rode it all day, come back to him. He said, well, I said, you've altered and you've smoothed out the turn on such and such a place on the right. Wow, he said, my God, that's exactly what we've done. And I picked up on it. I must have Sailor Sea, not all like this, nine, ten club jackets, three hoodies, uh, over 300 t-shirts, um, I buy stickers for the car, pens, roller coaster related, anything to do with the club. Yeah, everybody gets it off days, you think, oh, you get fed up. It's just great to sit down here and have all these beautiful memories around me. And you know, if, if you get a bad day and you think, oh, and you just sit in for five minutes, just have a little five minute reminisce. And the next thing I know, I'm sat here and I'm, and I'm smiling and I'm thinking, wow, I remember that. 